Hello, this is America Azevedo. It's been a while since I've done one of these uh, YouTube uh, micro uh, lectures, but now after uh, all our feedback cycles, I am feeling confident that this is not a bad way to go. It might actually be a good way to go for some of the classes that we do. And certainly recording like this with no editing gives me the feeling of being live even though the live is not quite live, but that uh, testiness of uh, no editing. And there's no editing here. This is what you get. So today's uh, subject is part of a theme that I want to develop uh, off and on with these uh, classes for Engineering 110 on uh, what I refer to as what's, what's next. And one of the things that's what's next that may be of value to many of you who are interested in going into the business world and uh, academic research and other things is the semantic web and web 3.0. Uh, the semantic web is being uh, intensively promoted by the creator and founder of the World Wide Web, Tim Berner-Lee. And in the uh, optional articles that I have for reading here uh, uh, in the description of this particular uh, YouTube uh, video, if uh, you'll see uh, that uh, you, can, you can look at uh, some of his biography and uh, things like that. Uh, what I want you to do, uh, along with listening to this very brief uh, description of mine, is to uh, also look at that description of uh, readings here with this uh, video on the right side click the more button and you'll see that it's extensive although not too extensive uh, you can uh, go in there and find an article called a smarter web new technologies that'll make uh, online search more intelligent and even lead to a web 3.0 and it takes you to an article in technology review March 2007 go click that and read that article. It's only about seven pages long. It talks about the semantic web and web 3.0 in a fairly easy way with some references to technical components and some of the controversies involved with it. Um, the, the idea of a semantic web, by the way, is actually very intriguing. It's supposedly the next step for the World Wide Web. You know with web uh, 1.0 uh, it was just putting up content uh, which uh, is your native HTML uh, tags that you're familiar with at this point. So you put up that content, you, you put information up there, but there's uh, hardly, well, virtually no interactivity at all. Uh, the producer puts the content up and the, the, the viewer views it, and that's about it. And search engines got developed during that early period in, in the mid-90s, uh, like Yahoo and eventually Google. Uh, which uh, you know started making the entire library of web documents around the world useful to people. What was uh, an amazing breakthrough was only a few years ago, during the past five years, the emergence of Web 2.0. Uh, web 2.0 then allows us, as users of material on the web, to modify the web pages and websites that we see. Like, like YouTube right now. I can modify the look and feel of it f f to somebody who comes to look at my channel. Uh, I can modify which folders I have to uh, categorize the videos that I create. And you can do that too with your favorites and other things. And there is now well over a dozen well-known such locations uh, on the web which provide tremendous functionality uh, to users uh, to the point that uh, even buying Microsoft Word and PowerPoint and Excel is not necessary for many people now because it's available using the facilities of Web 2.0. Web 3.0 uses the capacities of what's referred to as the semantic web. Uh, a version of the World Wide Web or a subset of the World Wide Web that uh, uses uh, uh, the appearance of intelligence. And I use the, appear the word appearance of intelligence because from what I get, I don't really see it as artificial intelligence yet. But it uses technologies to, to give us the ability to go searching into the web and make what is it, I, 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 I hate to even talk about it too much, it gives computers the ability, se seeming intelligence, to understand content on the World Wide Web. So it's as if the search engine understands the content out there. 
and then he gives you a fairly intelligent response not just a search that gives you a hundred or a thousand different documents but a search that attempts to understand a bit of what's in those documents and gives it uh, understands enough meaning so that you get more meaningful documents brought to the surface and maybe even some actions and activities with those documents that you know correlate you know, information from two different documents or more and give it something meaningful so like if uh, for instance i want to have uh, i want to have a diagnosis of, uh, of, of of let's say a back pain or something uh, then i can make a query a search and it would go as f as far as being able to help me with that plus locating uh, local physicians and therapists alternative and mainstream plus maybe even helping to set up the appointment uh, the possibilities are as big as our fantasy so in your readings you will notice that I have a section called at the, t at the top called required reading and viewing there's two required reading viewing assignments one is to read that article from the technology review which is pretty pretty easy read I think you'll enjoy it and the other one I think you'll also find fascinating it's a video of Tim Berner-Lee the inventor of the World Wide Web talking about his uh, latest uh, favorite uh, thing uh, the semantic web which he's promoting as the next stage of the World Wide Web so uh, you can hear him talk for about five minutes and explain what he sees as vision for that and by reading the article in the technology review you get a sense of how difficult it is to implement that vision very very difficult uh, and in the article there's a couple of uh, examples of uh, s sites that are emerging that utilize what appears to be the sem uh, versions of the semantic web one of them is uh, Joost J O O J O O S T dot com Joost dot com and it'll be referenced in there and you might enjoy going to it and actually um, playing around with it for a while uh, and uh, I, I recommend that. Also, there are uh, some optional uh, readings about Tim Berner Lee and his biography, and some of his thoughts about the worldwide, uh, w you know, the Web Three in there, and uh, more information about the emerging uh, Web Three standards and uh, Wikipedia article about uh, the semantic web, which will give you a different angle or slant on this matter. And those are optional. Uh, only the first uh, two in the required uh, reading and viewings are, are required. And then when we get around to Friday, I'm going to think of some kind of uh, Cyber Friday assignment that involves what you're uh, going to be uh, looking at here. So uh, that is all for now. Uh, I hope uh, that this will be an enjoyable and productive uh, variation on uh, a lecture. Definitely this is a re-engineered lecture very targeted to a certain uh, area of knowledge and uh, let's see if we can make this work together bye bye for now